Welcome everybody to Real Talk with Casey and Jojo. What's up, Casey? What's up, Jojo? <laughs> today we have a special guest in the house. And today we have, Yay. what do you want to go by? Because um, you can have so many different names. I mean, yeah, I used to go by Mike because I used to imitate Michael Jackson. But I mean, you can call Mike, but my real name is Noé. Like, you know, the Ark of Noah. Like, it's just basically the, the in Spanish is Noé. No way. So, okay, yeah, no so cool. Um, so basically, tell us. Um, we we've known each other for a really long time. I mean, oh, I think I, I can't even put a number on it. I, I I don't know if I was in my teens or if I was in my twenties or what. Oh my god, really, yeah, really it's long been time. it's been a long time. But for, can I just right off the bat? Yeah. Um, thank you so much for you guys doing this because I know a lot of people struggle with this like situations and awakenings and stuff like that. And sometimes, like for me, like Joanna, you were a huge influence on me because I, I really, I went through this dark night or this, you know, soul or whatever. But you got me through it, and you make me feel like like I wasn't crazy, you know. So I appreciate what you guys are doing. But yeah, go on, go. On. Thank you so much. No, well, no. Too, like, and it's it's been so cool, man, because everybody's story is so different, but it's yeah. the same. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it follows the same path. And it's so cool too, because I think like, you know, we've all been through this awakening, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, different people speak to different people, right? So right. you may you may speak to a section of the population that watches another episode and like that person speaks to them. But that's my yeah. favorite thing about like everybody so far, right? Yeah, right. Is that yeah. I feel like everyone, and I can feel like by your energy, like you're going to speak to a certain people. So I'm excited about this. Yeah, like everybody yeah. has, a, <laughs> and then and then whoever's everybody watching has this can traumas. see. Yeah, can see everybody's story and then see the the common denominator and all of it, and see that we're basically going through the same thing. We just have a different journey. Yeah, yeah I think exactly. I agree with that. Yeah, and, and I think. Of, yeah. Sorry, bro. Go ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't mean no, to and I, I think a beautiful thing about the story is that. Um, we we all experience it, right? As a collective, yeah. we you know we either choose to walk the path or we choose to turn away. But at the end right. of the day, you know, every single person on this planet longs to experience what we're talking about. Yeah, and it's so funny that you just mentioned that because like you, when when you say like walking away, like either you can choose to follow it or walking away. So my spiritual awakening it was like it kind of gave me like hey, they were like. Hey, look, you know, trying to get my attention, but I, I refuse, like, I completely ignored it. And I'm going to talk about it. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. Go. So tell so, us, yeah, tell, go, us man. tell us who you, um, <laughs> who you were in the past, who you considered to be, you know, your whole life before you had the spiritual awakening. Well, I, I was born and raised in Mexico city coming up from a, a very religious background. Like I was Catholic, I was raised Catholic. So I used to go to church every Sunday. So church was a must. And, you know, my, my, you know, the Latin community has always been about, you know, giving thanks and God and, and, and all this. So I was, I was there in, in Mexico until I was like 13. Then I moved to the States. And then I think at, at some point, like with transition, my mom was like, um, you know, meeting people and I was meeting, you know, you know, in high school, we were, we kind of just made the transition on going from Catholic to Christian because there was a lot of, a lot of rules in, in the Catholic church that it was, that was really, really strict. And, and I didn't like the fact that, you know, that will make us um, kind of feel like it was just making us feel bad for like, you know, expressing some type of question. So, and then it was very judgmental, like uh, at least from from my from my point of view. So then we we became a Christian, and then you know as time went on, um, you know I just I was just um, in in the in the I guess like learning a new language, learning a new you know a, a whole different concept of what I was used to, and I just you know I felt like I was going through a, another transition. So. Then I came, uh, I went to high school and then I didn't have any friends. I was, a, I was kind of a loner all the time. And then I fell in love, obviously. And then um, as I went on, I just became that, like, I just, you know, I guess like dancing was part of my journey as well. Cause I started dancing. Like that was my way to like That's how what I was going through. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, uh, the dancing part was like, always like a comfort, kind of like a meditation, you know, practice, but it, I, I didn't realize what a meditation at the time was. It was just my, my escape to, you know, avoid reality on those little depressing stages that I went through, you know? And then um, I was, you know, I enjoyed it. And 
you know, people will recognize me. I, I, will, I was in a couple of TV shows and, you know, people will, I was starting to get the recognition that I never had as a kid. So I became a little search center. Like, you know, I was like, I, li I like the attention and I like the uh, popularity like that I, that I came with, with the dancing. So I was just like, oh, like, the yeah, ego like like it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, ego just expand. I was like, yeah. And what? then the people what? would be like, yeah, like, what's up, Mike? How are you doing? And I'm like, who are you? <laughs> it was just, it was just like, you know, like, and that's how, that's how we met. And then, yeah. and, you know, I went on. That was in my days when I was like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so like time went on and, you know, I had like, uh, I had a job like doing like dancing and also like my stepdad does like remodeling. So he flips homes. So I was working for him and then doing part-time on the dancing and, and, you know, it became a thing until, um, I think that 9-11, 9-11 was like, um, it was happening through my, uh, I think like my twenties, my early twenties. And so like that really affected me. And I started, that was my foundation of my whole, like what the meaning of life was like seeing people just kill like that. And like the, the. I just couldn't understand why someone based on their beliefs will think that this is a good thing for, for them to do based on the religion, you know, cause it was, it was, it was all over the news. And, and I was just like, man, like why, if there's a God, like if there's a really a God, why would he allow this? You know, why would he That's, let this yeah. happen? Like that, it, it, my, my, my foundation about like who we are and where we came from and who, what's the meaning of life started there. And so like, as I went on, I, I completely ignored it. It was just hit there in the back of my mind. And then um, time went on and and I started getting this like dreams, like sleep paralysis. But so I, I, I don't know if you guys ever had sleep paralysis. So it, it's different for everyone. I don't, I, but, so for me, like whenever I used to get sleep paralysis, I will see, I will see things. I will feel the energy and then I will see things. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the first time I experienced it was a, at an old house that I used to live and there was a cat that it was, like my roommate had a cat and, and, you know, I, I went in, I, I came back from somewhere, a party or something. And so I went in, in the bed and usually the cat sheds a lot. So I, you know, I would just keep him away, like from, from in there in my room because it would leave the hairs everywhere. So anyway, this, this, like I closed the door and I went back, like I went to bed and I was sleeping and then I felt like something like jumping on my bed. And I was like, what the hell? Like, oh man, like I left the door open, like the cat is here. Uh, so I was just like so tired that I would like, as soon as I was just like trying to react, I felt like some someone grabbed my leg. And then just like this rush of energy went all the way up. And I could, I could hear like screams like of little kids, like, <sighs> but there was this one main one that it was like really like the focus of it. And then as, as I went up, like I, I instantly, I was aware I was seeing myself, but I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe or anything. And as I, as I did that, I looked in the corner of my eye and then, and then there was a little girl right there, like with the white dress. And I was like, I, w I just like woke up or whatever. I just like, my senses came back and I was like, what the, what the heck was that? And then I thought it was just like a nightmare or something, but then like, those little stages kept happening in there. And it was always something related with the little girl. So, you know, I got to the point where I was like, man, like this place is maybe either haunted or something. Cause I felt the energy. I was afraid to like, cause it kept, it kept happening instantly, like constantly. And so I was in, uh, at some point I was just like, man, I'm going to sleep on my parents because I can't deal with this. Like, this is, this is kind of scary. Anyways, so I got to the point where I, I, you know, opened up to my mom and I was like, mom, there's something going on in that house. Like, I, I don't feel comfortable sleeping there anymore. And she was just like, well, yeah. why don't you just move? Yeah. <laughs> Peace. So take, yeah, long, long short story when I ended up moving out. So when I was moving out, there was a neighbor right across, uh, across the street and, and, you know, he saw me, you know, leaving, packing up and she's like, hey man, like, what are you doing? Like, you know, you're leaving. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And so I don't know how we got into the conversation of, 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 you know, this, like the sleep paralysis. I don't know. He might've said something or something, but I, I expressed to him what was going on. And he was like, you're kidding me. And so the, he, his jaw was dropped and he was like, 
like you can't like you can't be serious and i was like what like what is there something going on in the house he's like no like my grandma used to live like live in this house before me and she used to tell me that this there was a guy there was a family that that this little kid a girl shot herself with her uh, with her dad's pistol and like so it was just like hmm. it was just like ah uh, like it was yeah it was an accident i guess and so this little girl found her dad's gun and then shot herself by accident and and that opened me up into like oh my god like so what i was experiencing it was it was real so <laughs> And then as I, you know, I, yeah, I was just like freaked out for a little bit. And then I ended up leaving, moved to another place, but the sleep paralysis kept, kept like happening and kept happening. And at some point I just kind of learned to cope with it because like I did research and I did like, what, what is this happening to me? Like, I it's couldn't hard to find people to it. talk yeah. to too. Right, right. And the minute that I expressed, yeah, that's it. That, I'm glad you said that because the minute that I started expressing this to some other people, they were like, "Man, you just having nightmares," and, yeah, and I was like, it. "I don't think yeah. so." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was, yeah, I I went to like preachers, and then they blessed me. They like you know with holy water and everything, and I read books and stuff. It got to the point where I was just like, this is, this is, I guess this is normal. I'm going to have to like live with this for the rest of my life. Right. <laughs> so, but then there's the, like, you know, time went on, but this, I got this really, really, really uh, a big one where I was sleeping and then I feel like the energy came in and like, you just feel this presence of energy and you're like, oh, here we go again. But this are you, time was different. Are you awake when this is happening or are you? Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's, okay. it's, yeah, it's, um, so I feel the presence and that's what makes me, it wakes me up. So I gotcha, feel this gotcha. presence and then it wakes me up. And then I just feel like this energy is just coming and rushing through me. And Im like, okay, do your thing. Like, what are you, <laughs> what are you going to show me now? And like, but no, this time, like, I really, um, it was coming out all the way. Me, and it sucked me. It sucked me completely somewhere else, like to another um, another place where I woke up uh, being a woman. I was a woman, and and I could tell you what I was wearing. I was wearing a dress. You weren't wearing, astral like, projecting. No, no, no. This is this is no. This was this was like it started as a, a sleep paralysis, but this okay. like it sucked yeah. me. It, I had like a literally out of body experience. Like boom, maybe it was astral projecting. I don't know, but. I was in a woman, like I was in, I was looking myself as a woman and then this gentleman, I couldn't see his face, but he was like, you know, talking me, like killing me. And then in the back of him, there was a dog with this evil eyes, just, you know, kind of like encouraging him to like kill me. And I was like kicking, screaming. And I was just like, that. all I could see was like, you know, me, my shoes, one shoe was, was missing. And then I was kicking and kicking. And then I was just trying to, you know, get away. But like he literally was killing me and so um and then the dog noticed the presence of someone else which was me my my consciousness and so the 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 dog started growling even more and 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 then the dog came at me he lounged at me and then just kind of like went in me and then i woke up and i was like oh my god what was this <laughs> like what, what was this so i called my mom i was like mom i think i'm gonna get possessed <laughs> <laughs> So I don't. Me, like, <laughs> oh my like i told her yeah and then um you know this it all happened throughout the years you know like this experience so I've, i i knew and it's that very it's very tied lie. yeah it's very tied together with our beliefs and because right. growing up catholic there's a lot of demons and devils and right, even christian right. you know then we have in our beliefs those programs and then of course mm -hmm. we manifest whatever we believe so we exactly, kind of bring yes. that about yeah Right, right. So that was like, I guess, my consciousness and stuff like that. And um, um, as as far as my spiritual awakening, I think I like they were trying to get my attention, whatever it was. Maybe my guides, I don't know. They were just like trying to, like, like you said, Key. You know, we either we choose to go down that path or like we choose to ignore it. I ignored it completely, but then it came back like twice as bad. So my the the big spiritual awakening that happened it was in twenty nineteen where i mean i suffer from panic attacks for for for, the, for as long as i can remember but i never was on medication until like maybe in 2017 they just gave me pills but like, they were numbing me and like i feel like i wasn't myself and stuff like that so 
but it worked like the panic attacks weren't there anymore and so like one time you know i went to um get this prescription like uh, uh, refill and and i remember just coming home and like taking it because you have to take it every day right and so like this one one pill like i took and then you know i went to bed and then like i woke up like feeling like this there was something different about like the whole thing i started seeing like vivid colors i started seeing like like nature and another and 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 another more detailed way like everything was like vibrating but psychedelics and, like, up like in it, there. yeah 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 <laughs> I don't know what it was. I mean, I've taken these pills before, you know, for, for as long as I can remember since I started them. But this this refill was, it did something. <laughs> so it, it, it definitely, like, gave me this bliss of, like, man, like, life is beautiful. And, like, damn, like, this is, like, I feel this bliss all over my body. Like, I haven't, I feel like I had no ego. Like, I felt like, I was loving, I was loving everything. I was loving everyone. I felt like everything was connected. Even it like- Sounds like you were on mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it opened me up to like, I was like that for like three days, three three straight straight days. I'm like, man, like, is this, what is going on? Like, I, is this going to be permanent? And so, yeah. And then I, I, I felt blissful, blissfulness for like three days. And I was like, man. And then- as soon as I, I started noticing, like, I started asking questions. I was like, is this going to be forever? Is this going to be, like, my state of mind? Is this what it feels like to be enlightenment? Because I already I already knew about, like, you know, spiritual somewhat, but I never really understood what they were talking about. Like, you, you know, you went through your thing, and, and I was watching at the time, but I couldn't understand at the time. But now, I like, when talking, looking back, I was like, oh, man, is this what, I guess, like, what Joanna was talking about? <laughs> so the minute i stopped like i started asking questions like hey like is this gonna be good my ego started coming back in i was like like what is this what is this so it, you know tom it went away and i was like man i want to go back to this to yeah the, to, everybody to gets this, a like glimpse. feeling yeah. Well, yeah. like, just, like, like feeling. here's the carrot and now you have mm -hmm. to chase it forever yeah back like you want that back yeah 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 and so like I started even questioning more things about life. I was like, man, what did I just experience? Like, that was the most beautiful, intense, you know, blissfulness that I ever experienced in, in my life. And so I I started, like, researching, like, you know, this this thing that happened and, like, how people become enlightenment and stuff like that and and how meditation helps a lot to, to get to that stage. And at the time, like, when I went to the doctor before, there was this doctor who already um who who told me that meditation might be beneficial for my anxiety so prior to that i've been doing meditation two years before 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 the whole thing happened so i was already familiar with meditation but i never um i guess like after this i started taking meditation like seriously and then i, I started tapping into something that it was beyond my understanding so the more the, the more that i meditated the more that I, I was like getting back to that little stage and then little pieces of, of, of that blissfulness, I got through meditation. So that was, that was like the whole, um, the whole open door for me to, to become like, you know, to question like what spiritual awakening was. But then I went through the dark night of the soul, like, like you explained, you know, uh, I was, I was feeling depressed and I was feeling like, more lonely and i was feeling more um like you think everyone thinks you're yeah, crazy yeah 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 and i was i was i was just expressing this to to people and and they were like man like i don't know like i don't know what to tell you no one understood but right? then yeah yeah nowhere nowhere really understood and then i was on at some point i was just um i was on this like mentality of like what's the point of living and like what's like you know obviously i guess at, at some point everybody has those little thoughts like you know like you think it you know suicidal where's my like exit that. Like, yeah. yeah like where's my exit i just want to go like this isn't what i signed up for you know what why am i here why is this why did i get that glimpse of, of blissfulness and now it's gone and like you feel even more depressed and more alone mm -hmm. and the minute that you start expressing this to like people and like man you know 
Oh, that's another thing, like through our meditations. And then after that little blissfulness thing, I started getting like, you know, I guess people call it downloads. So yeah. like the more I meditated, I started getting like, you know, knowing within like, this is funny because, and I never really talk about this to, to, to anyone. And my aunt passed away when I was here in the States and she's the woman that raised me. So I, I was, I never got to say goodbye or whatever, but after this awakening and I feel like I opened a door for, 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 I don't know, like, I guess you want to call it another, like the divine. And so like in my dreams, she would come in and tell me this stuff, like, um, like, you know, be mindful of what you put in your body and like, you know, this, this little information that, like that, that you get. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. She will come into my dreams and then, and then tell me things and then, you know, be patient with your mom. Your mom is going through this. And, and, and I was like, I really feel like I was going crazy. I was like, am I making this up? Like, what is happening? And then I started seeing <laughs> synchronicities, like two, 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 three, 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 all this, like even birds, like there was one time with this, like, freaking bird like flew i was in the and i was a stoplight and then this bird a red canary or red a red I bird I, I, yeah 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 thank you and it was just like it stopped and and right in, in front of my windshield and it, he was just like you know like pew, pew, and then went away <laughs> he's trying like, to what? get your attention <laughs> what the? i was like what <laughs> th those little moments and and you know and then like people will come in out of nowhere and then uh, they will spread they will express like their their feelings and and I guess in a way like it, it just opened me up to another another um another perspective in life and so the minute that I started like you know talking to other people like and on, online like you Joanna it was just like man I guess I'm not crazy after all you know but there was moments where I really felt that I was going crazy and like no one understood, not even my family. After your awakening, everything changes. Like you, you your friends changes. I make like, a, I stopped drinking. I stopped going out. I stopped like, you know, putting things in my body that I know that it was affecting me and that was giving me like anxiety. And that's one thing that people don't understand. Like everything, what you put in your body, it has like an effect on you. And, and so like, we talk about demons right and like bad versus good and stuff like that and if you want to call a demon something like i think sugar will be like a big demon for 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 you know for everyone i guess because yeah. all these chemicals that they put in your body is just like we're consuming the same things that we're suffering from and and i was trying to express this to people and people would look at me like i was crazy yeah and and so like there was a lot of things like i was like man like you have the ability to like open up the divine and get message within and people will look at me like I was crazy and then you know and then so at some point I was just like you know I'm gonna stop like doing this because I can't force anyone to to and and like you say like I, I reached out to you Joanna and you you kind of got me through it and I'm you know once again I'm grateful for that because you were you, it's hard you make me feel better. And I was, I was just looking for a little bit of validation, I guess, in a way, you know, in a sense. Yeah. And I'm, so, I'm yeah. curious. I'm curious to get you guys opinion on this. Cause like, as you, as I'm listening to your story, I had, I guess for me, what was a small epiphany. And it's like, you know, when you, when we feel this bliss, cause I've, I haven't experienced it up to that level that you experienced it, but I've experienced it mm -hmm. enough to know what you're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. And when we experience that bliss and then it goes away, Right. Because we've been conditioned by church to believe that God exists out of us, outside of us, and that Santa Claus only gives to good little boys and girls. Right. That right. our own self-worth is defined by not being able to act, we access this bliss. Right. Right. You know I mean? Like, now, oh, you're not yes. good enough. You're guilty. Correct. Me culpa, me culpa, it's, me culpa. It's, yeah, like, yeah, it's not yeah, my yeah. culpa. And what it's, the hell? Yeah, it's subconscious. It's not. It's, it's the condition subtle. that we were taught to. Right. Yeah. But it's an extension of our conditioning. You know, yeah. Through church and Catholicism. And doctrines. Bible. Doctrines, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So thank I feel you. Like that was... Because <laughs> yeah. that helped me. Like, that, I saw that as, as, I, as you were telling your story. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, but I feel like I really, the, me the moment, and, you know, a lot of people might not agree with this, but 
I feel like I found who God or what the divine was, the universe, whatever you want to call it, the moment that I stepped out of religion, like all this conditioning beliefs and like systems that I was like, I mean, I, I grew up, very, like I said, I grew up very religious and, you know, finding out that everything that we were taught, it's like finding out that you, your dad is not really your dad, you know? And it's yeah. so, it, it was painful. It was painful for me to like, man, like, you know, like we were taught the wrong history. <laughs> and 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 so I became more empathetic to people you know I feel I feel 10 times more suffering and I'm I'm the type of guy that you know whenever I'm going through anxiety or something like that sometimes I just just to get my mind out of it I will stop you know popping on, on Instagram or like Facebook just to try to you know keep my mind of things where you're just the internet and I see all this you know news about like people doing this and people you know, committing suicide or people killing each other and, and stuff like that. So that, that, I, that really affects me. So now I learned to, like, we basically create your own reality, right? So mm -hmm. I choose yep. what to, what to focus Consume, on. Because if yeah. I focus, yeah, if I focus more on the negative, then that's what I'm going to get a reaction out of it, you know, but if I focus more on the, on the positive and like, you know, people are not always doing bad things. People are actually doing some good. And so that, or feels you know something and sometimes even even on tiktok so i i i think i expressed this to you joanna there was a, a guy who's like mm. you know preaching and and judging everyone if you don't follow god this this and that and i see all these comments and and so people will literally man like i saw a comment underneath like if this god is like like you say it is then i just want to die you know like people are actually believing this so I stepped in and I was like, man, like, this isn't how you, I, I, th I think I say something along the lines. I was like, man, if you're going to, you know, express yourself, you should also express understanding. And he took it offensive. He was like, yo, you know, God will judge you. God, God will do this. God will do this. And, and, and I'm like, man, like, you and know, so I just, I'm, I'm going to say something about that. Um, Just because, I mean, I was in on that, that like, tiktok thing that i saw and he showed it to me and yeah, i saw yeah. it and <laughs> you know there's when it comes to social media we can easily get sucked in to all these things right mm -hmm. and and when we because i've felt it many times where i see that people are saying stuff and i i feel like i want to like say no that's not it or <laughs> don't you know or correct them but then how much energy does that take away from us, right? So sometimes it helps us because mm -hmm. we're kind of teaching ourselves as we're teaching them. Um, and then sometimes it consumes too much of our energy, especially if it's going to become a comment after comment after comment. And it's like, oh my God, enough already, right? <laughs> so, so, you know, there's a balance between that. And then I've taken it as a mirror that if there's so much that's bothering me about other people's unawareness then it's just a mirror that i'm still very much unaware on my journey and that yes. that's my guides telling me hey I tell you. you still have to level up because <laughs> their shit doesn't matter it's your shit that matters and it yeah, kind of puts I me back agree. in line you know yeah. yeah and i learned that the hard way um yeah. i mean i i was always <laughs> we all do. especially we all do. yeah <laughs> so you know i i stopped like you know feeding too much into it and like trying to think but i did every once in a while like i feel bad for for you know people and now what i do is just like i just comment on on, on their little things you're doing fine you're good don't worry yeah, about yeah. it That's you know job. this is all their beliefs so you, yeah just hang in there you know trying to yeah. give them like some encouragement on, on on the social media right but um yeah i i completely agree with you and as far as like uh what what this whole experience about the spiritual awakening for me it's been about like shedding all the oldest beliefs that i used to have and like you know kind of letting the ego easy up a bit and, and and just focusing on 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 what's important and what's important i guess like for everyone is to find some some meaning in life like i guess everyone see, seeks novelty or you know so, something to look forward to and, and I think like people really struggle because, you know, I mean, life is hard sometimes, you know, like it, 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 it comes for all of us, you know, um, some people are more aware of, of things that is going on around the world. Like, for instance, I was talking about 
to this to this guy um at work the other day we were just talking about like how he's living you know uh he goes on trips and and all this and and just ba basically what i was doing self center and stuff like that and i'm like you know that, that's your thing that's your thing but i guess at some point life comes for all of us like you know have you ever buried your aunt have you ever buried your parents have you ever buried your you know you know or have you ever you know have suicidal thoughts you know depressed you know all these things that can affect us and then makes us feel like we're we're worthless you know so that's that's where i'm like learning how to you know get rid of i guess in a way shift it so, yeah and i think I, I, shift mean, it. I think the journey to enlightenment again listening again i'm like i get, I get this download right <laughs> it's like the mm -hmm. journey the journey to enlightenment is really just the, dis the dissolution of many many versions of your ego right Mm -hmm. your your ego there's an ego part of you that does this and then you you have to love it and and, and recognize it and honor it and it sort of just evaporates but there's like yeah. 150 thousand different <laughs> egos within you so it's like as you as you dissolve the ego one by one by one by one by one oh my god yes. right you yes. you basically become white you become you know, yes. bathed, bathed in the you know the the light or whatever. the full consciousness yeah. of who we are and i have um, a question right. for you too oh Go ahead. I, I'm gonna forget. Oh, go ahead. Crap. Oh, I the, I was gonna say I really admire the fact like your talent of being able to produce uh videos of oh. <laughs> expressing you know a message in in a in a visual way that that is like capturing and impactful and all of that and it's like. I start thinking about when you said the purpose and the meaning in life and all of that. And it's like, man, when you can express a message like that, that's, uh, that sticks with somebody, you know? Yeah. It's like uh, meditation, I guess, for me, like, I guess a lot of people would think that meditation is just like being, you know, sad, sad. I mean, I do that, but also yeah. meditation can be like being on the sound, like, you know, for, for you, it could be, you know, like, I mean, I guess, everyone who's like clearing their mind and just being in the zone whatever either, either it could be it's sports it could be like you know dancing singing i think that's those are the type of meditations that you know people get and, and like being inspire present. and stuff like it's just yeah, yeah exactly being 100%. Present. thank you yeah so yeah those those are really in, in, impactful for for everyone i guess and thank you for saying that like that means a lot and yeah. also I, th I i think that it's perspective so um before like i'm gonna add, i'm gonna bring in this analogy like when someone goes to see you like it's um people get so offensive when when people ghost to you or ghost you but um and if you can just shift that perspective into like i mean if he's gonna ghost you or she's gonna ghost you that means that their 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 communication level is not there yet and that's okay you know, for, it's not it's not for everyone, but I mean, like you eventually will attract whoever is going to be willing to communicate with you, and and you know, come back to that level where you're like, I guess, yeah. you know, it's just th that perspective gives get you get on my level. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Get on my level. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and mm -hmm. people take it so offensive, and and I guess in a way, like everyone has like a different you know path. They're not really ready to commit, and some others, you know, that they are, and. Yeah, it's like your your vibe it, attracts your tri your tribe. Like you, yeah, exactly. It's it's just attraction. Yeah. Do you remember what you were yeah. gonna say? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I've been wanting to ask <laughs> yeah. this for for a minute. All right. So <laughs> let's get let, let's get a little sexual if if we can. Okay. Um, because I'm interested about when you you know when you felt the bliss right mm -hmm. now you you also mentioned that you were in love. I don't know. Yes. In the yes. Very beginning, right? So I'm assuming right. you've you've had that kind of sex that's like like very not not eros but like agape right like it's just you're connected and and you're and it's just flowing yes and, and it's passionate but it's not like you, it's feel, not you know quite. what i'm saying right yeah 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 i know okay I know okay um, so 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 my question, before yeah yeah so Go my ahead. question okay. is is that when you were feeling this bliss how similar was it to that type of sexual experience if it was at oh, all man that's a really good question um, <laughs> no, because I kind of know no. where you're going. So. 
honestly, like the blissfulness that I felt in those three days were so much more than just being sexual and being in love. Like, okay. I can't tell you how much, like, it's like when you're that in that state and that blissfulness, nothing really matters. Like, no matter what pleasure you think of, like, the more, yeah. Because yeah, it's at a really higher, it's on a time. higher yeah, level a higher thing. That versus like yeah. pleasure of like the desire, the animal nature. It's more of like yes. the higher spiritual connection. Right. Man, and, and I used to get really emotional just even talking about this, uh, like expressing that this one is to like friends and family member and they, they would be like, well, why are you crying? It's everything okay. And like, no, because I really want you to experience what truly love is. Like I, we yeah. think yeah. that we have an idea of it, but no, like that what I felt like I say I never felt that in my life and 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 it was it was it was to another level like magical I felt like after I felt those little I mean after three days of that blissfulness I feel like I was completely a changed person like I completely changed my my diet I completely changed like I, I quit drinking I quit like going so it was out basically a kundalini it was just, awakening yeah, it yeah. was like yes exactly you started you started it to was, respect the temple mm-hmm. yeah right? and 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 i it was like this download that everything was everything that i was consuming at the time wasn't really healthy for me especially for my anxiety like i knew exactly why i was getting panic attacks and i knew why i was getting depressed everything just came at once and i was like whoa like i can't believe like i mean i didn't even see that you know, and 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 I think that um, because after those three days, I really, I really went deep and like trying to figure out what this was. And mm-hmm. I read books. I did like research on near death experiences and all this. And some of the near death experiences ex- they express this kind of blissfulness where you're like, some, I mean, some di, some some di, some di, some day, some. <laughs> i'm gonna put it up i'll put it up yes. but it's, it's yes. that place of bliss um because i've looked it up too because i you know yeah. i had this experience that was like that where where i went into like white light and it was just nothing but unconditional love yeah. and it was so warm and it was so she hasn't stopped loving. talking about it i haven't and that was <laughs> that was in 2001 yeah. that that happened and, and it still don't really yes. still comes up and it still comes up <laughs> it comes because, out, yeah because i i woke up crying wanting to go back to that and and i was like that was my, oh my cat that was like tell me about oh it. my god how do i get back to that i want to feel that way and it was yes. what it led me towards this you know the meditation is always the way that's the way yeah go within and and it it's still like to this day going Oh my God, I, I want to feel that again. And and yeah, it just keeps you it keeps you there. Like Yeah, now I mean I'm I've been really good at meditating. Like I meditated like for us for four years now. So now it's easy for me to get that to that stage where I'm into the meditation stage, but it doesn't last like no more than five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Which it's is a like, practice. It's a even, muscle. Yeah, it's, not even a one minute. Like man. A <laughs> Uh, but man. it does i do i do i do get to the stage it's not an everyday thing but i do there's times like maybe once every three months i get to that stage and i'm like wow like that was that was worth it you know all these practices that you get and then you start getting like messages like it could be in the radio it could be like yeah somewhere like dreams so yeah. i get this like dreams and, and it and it happens several times now i'm in a forest and then there's like um a river on the side and then I'll, I see like maybe 10 light beams around me and then just like watching me and and I'm like what is going on <laughs> so but I'm in the forest I'm just like meditating you know and I'm just being totally present but then there's this light beams like they're all around me like they're behind the bushes some of them are like close to me some of them are like you know by the river so because of that dream I, I, whenever I meditate, I visualize that. And that's what gets me to that state on, nice. on, 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 you know, the blissfulness. So like it works like a magic trick. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Have you, um, have you lucid dreamed? Do you know what lucid dreaming? I, I think I have. Yes. Like where you, um, where you are aware, you become aware that you're dreaming. So then you have full control yes. of your dream and you can do whatever you want. Yeah. 
I, I only done it twice. Um, and it was flying through, yeah. through somewhere. And, and yeah, um, stop talking about that either. Because <laughs> it's amazing. These flying. experiences yeah, are amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did. Um, I was, I woke up somewhere with a friend of mine and then I was like, yo, let, let's go to this place over here. And me thinking I wanted to just, you know, walk. But and and now that I recall the dream, I don't think I had a body. I don't think I had like any sort of like physical just body. Consciousness. I was just conscious and floating. Yeah. Like I was floating the minute that I just started like, oh, let's go this way. Like I just yeah, you know, my consciousness was just like going like there. And I was like, oh man, like I wanna go, I wanna go there. Like yeah, let's go yeah. over there. I went through a breach and then everything. I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. So like cool. And I was like, man, what? <laughs> that was the first time. That was the first time. And then uh, I got to tell you another one. The second time was like more, a little more intense. My aunt came to me uh, in my, the, you know, her name is Maria, like the one that she passed away. She came into a dream and she's like, hey, like, let's go somewhere. And I'm like, okay, let's go. But, you know, we, I, you know, I guess I was bit vivid dreaming or whatever but i i left my body and i was just going around you know the corner so we left so there's a corner in my house that is a dead end and and i felt like i was leaving and then i saw the street and everything and i saw like a couple of like lights on but then i, I saw a red towel throwing on, on the on the road and so like you know i didn't think anything of it but it was just like you know chilling and and she told me about like how to be more um, empathetic to towards my mom because my mom also like um, she gets sick a lot and it's just based on on like her anger and and I don't know she gets really angry when we disobey especially with my younger brother so she like that's getting into her right so she told me to give her a message and 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 that's what we were talking about and then you know I came down and and I woke up and I was like man like that was weird. And so out of curiosity, when I woke up, I was getting ready to go to work. And then out of curiosity, I never go to that road, but I wanted to see just to see if I, if, if that red towel was, yeah. right? So tell me how I'm driving by it and the yeah, freaking that towel sounds like is right projection. there. I was like, oh my yeah. God. Like, yeah, you're that, astral like, that sounds can, like astral yes. projection because in astral and projection, like, you're able to leave your body and still mm -hmm. go to places and see them and then say, this is what I saw and then be actually be there. Like, yeah. And I had, I had heard of astral projecting, but I, I mean, I couldn't distinguish if it was a dream or, you know, a vivid dream right, or astral yeah. projecting. But then that was like confirmation that. I wasn't really making this up and I was like man like this is really happening like oh my god like this is huge and yeah it, it, that was just it made me feel good and uh, you know again like I just I just try to express this to uh to my friends and stuff like that and they're like look at me like I was crazy but then yeah. I, I gave my my mom the message I was like talking to her and I was like hey like mom you know um so I had a dream in my head <laughs> I didn't know how she was gonna take it and then, well, first of all, I mentioned like, you know, things that she happened in her childhood. And and she was like, how do you know that? Like, you 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 were not with me. And I was like, <laughs> oh, like I, I was just, you know, just the little bird told me or whatever. And no, seriously, how do you know that? And and I had to just break it down. I was like, mom, like, like this happened. Because she knows about my spiritual working and she knows about like that I was going through this depression and like, because I expressed that. And she, she's witness my sleep paralysis and like things that I used to go through like so yeah and so to me before this experience I was really thinking that I was crazy even even talking to you you know sometimes you'll give me like comfort and like be like yo like you're okay you're not crazy but then there was times where I couldn't distinguish what was real and what was not and like you you get really deep in your head and 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 you're wondering what reality is after mm -hmm. that experience you know mm -hmm. So you yeah. get caught up on 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 thinking like, am I making this in my head or am I just like so those little little you know episodes or like what is called astro projector or something, it make me feel better because I knew then that I wasn't really going crazy. So like yeah, yeah it's it's powerful. Dude, are, are you are you working on like are you actively working on these skills that you have? Are you actively working on yes? Kind of I I have I have uh, nice. getting I, better. Yeah. 
Yes. Um, I gotta say, like, meditation has opened me up to another level of, like, consciousness and perspective. Like, um, I grew up with cousins who were really judgmental and and I, I i got sucked into it you know so like i used to judge people like oh like this is this oh like look at the shoes and stuff like that and now i don't even do that anymore and 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 what i try to do is like for instance throughout meditation you know i heard i heard something or it just came into me in my head saying like you know you should look at people's soul instead of like their appearances and, and just imagine if we see like, you know, the, the, the beauty of, of every one of us, you know, because I think everyone has a good, good, good intentions. It's just the way that we were programming. Like we just, you know, sometimes we get frustrated and we're not really connected within that. We just want to get back at whoever did it wrong. You know what I mean? So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, yep. um, it's, it's so, sometimes it's unfair for people to, to go through that and, and, you know, like, I want to be able to help, and, but not to force my beliefs on anyone, you know, if they're, if they're asking about it. So sometimes I'm slowly opening up back again through, through my social media, like express, expressing myself and expressing how, you know, you, you can love yourself within without having the exter external things for you to fulfill you. Because, I mean, right. at some point I had a girlfriend, I had a job, I had like a house, I had everything. And I still, I still felt that there was something missing, and and that deep questions, I just never addressed it until later on, that I started, you know, having more anxiety and stuff like that, and and I feel like everything lined up, you know, whatever I was going through, like the anxiety process opened me up to this awakening that I didn't know it was coming. It was like a GPS. But I knew there was something to right, right, right. Yeah. Kind of going anxiety. It was like. You're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong yes, way. Yes, you're going the yeah. wrong Like, wake up, <laughs> wake up. You're, you're, you're going through the, th 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 you know, what is that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the rumble strips. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's anxiety. And that can, yeah. And, and those little stages where you are awakened and then you're like trying to express to people, like, I'm not going to like, I feel like I was better than, than everyone, you know, oh, I have this knowledge and stuff like that. But that was my ego getting back in the way, you know, it was like my ego getting, but then through our meditation, I learned to, you know, ground myself. And, and I mean, everyone's the same. Everyone has their, their own experiences and their own traumas. And like I said, I think the ultimate goal in life here is just to seek love and, and just to express it in a way that you could only know how, you know? Yeah, I think, so. I think like the biggest thing, man, is that like this journey, no matter who, mm -hmm. who takes it, no matter where you are, you have to be accountable. Right. Yeah. Like step yeah. one is you have to be accountable for your choices, for your actions, and you have to realize. And I think in that accountability, you you start to realize who you really are, right? Like how yeah. powerful you really are, and the fact that you have access to even more powerful stuff, whatever you want to call it, yeah. that you can only access by operating the way that every other man on this planet has to operate, which is right. through love, through grace through, you know, healing yourself through the dis dissolution of ego. And we all follow the same path. And it, it's yeah. like the more, the more people understand right. this and connect, the more we then respect each other's individuals and in this, you know, the race, the, what country are you from? You know, all the bullshit. The labels and the yeah, yeah, labels. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The labels yeah. just, just drop. And yes, yeah, but. And then there's just love. Um, Cause you could put people in a room and when you start talking to them, it doesn't even matter what label it is. Like right. you're, you're just getting to know the person and you start finding the common denominator and, Oh, you do that. Oh, right. I like that. Blah, blah, blah. Let me ask you something real quick. Um, if this was your last message to the world, what would you think okay. is the most important oh, thing for you to say? <laughs> yeah. Like we all look, we, we all come to this physical dimension to, yeah be born to experience life and then to die we're all going to right die. yes but we want to we um, want to leave behind a message like what would that be? yeah um well before i answer that i i want to point out the fact that like when whenever i looked up things on on this journey to like question what was real and what was not and like i feel like a lot of spiritual teachers are like you know 
the mainstream spirituality, they, they tell you how to do things and stuff like that, but they don't never really teach you how to heal yourself and, and, and your inner, your inner child. And that's something that I admire about you guys and, and your academy is just like you actually address those things, you know, like you, t- you tell people how to heal and then you go through this like shadow work and expressions, you know, so that's 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 really something that I really admire for, from for you guys. Like that's from you. And um, as far as like leaving something behind, I guess um, it's a tough question. I mean, I guess everybody is just wanting to know the ultimate goal in life but for me it's i feel like living in the moment here and and now it's 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 everything um you know i i stopped taking medication i stopped like with my anxiety i don't get i don't no longer get anxiety just because i try not to focus on the outcome i try not to focus on the past and i try not just you know just be grateful and, you know, ground yourself, be thankful for the things that you have, you know, um, those, um, on those meditation practices, I feel like it's been helping me a lot because I see, I see things that I never really wasn't able to see before. So for instance, um, uh, I go to the gym, I, I'm quite active. So, I go to this gym and then this 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 guy who has no legs goes to the gym, you know, and and you know how hard it is for him, like just to come in with a wheelchair, open their eyes and just get the weights, you know, that to me is just like inspiring, you know, because we lose sight of that. We we yeah, we're not forget. thankful enough that, you know, we could lose a leg, we can use an arm and all this privilege that people have and, and, and we still complain. Yeah. So I guess the 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 great message that I will want to leave behind was be always be grateful for what you have instead of what you can't have, you know? Yeah. People and focus it, on the wrong thing. And it sounds so simple, but it is it weighs so much. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And I actually talked to that guy. I was like, man, like because he ha- he has a ponytail. So I'm like, I'm growing my ponytail <laughs> a little bit. So he has a big This is down to here. Like, <laughs> really? His ponytail, yeah. So I, I went up to him, I was like, man, like what kind of shampoo do you use? <laughs> he was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, no, man, look at my How hair. How often I'm do you brush like, it? Like, he was like, <laughs> that's funny, man. Yeah, that's funny. No, like, but I I, I just use, you know, like uh, head and shoulders. And I was like, that's it? He's like, oh, man, like, that's actually pretty cool. And he's like, yeah, thanks, man. Like, that that means a lot. Thank you. He was like, you know, he was like so happy that I came up to him and asked him because I give him props on his hair. I was like, man, I want to get my hair like you. So it was, it was, and now we're in parties. Like, we're like, man, like, let me know if you need a spot. He's like, yeah, and thanks, you were, man. You were living in the moment, you know? You were, <laughs> yeah, you were, exactly. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking present. about what he was going to, yeah. So those those little moments when you learn how to be grateful, I, I think that's that says a lot about you know you and just yeah but so, this is so awesome thank you yes, Joanna, for thank having you me. I know thank yeah, you man. for for saying yes like right away you were like oh yes 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 I was like Yay. Oh, yeah yeah I was like <laughs> yeah because <laughs> I know you've been there like since day one I was like Joanna like guess what happened to me like I'm having this like things yeah. and you kind of guide me through it and, yeah, and, and I'm grateful and, forever and grateful since we're, for that. thank you thank you since we're doing this whole thing on spiritual awakenings and I and I know that you were you know going through it and and we all have our our ups and downs while we're going through it and yeah um you know since everybody does have a story I was like oh I, I really want to hear his because it's um it's so needed there's you don't yeah. know who is listening yeah. that might resonate with your story and, yes. 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 and feeling like I, you're not crazy you're not crazy <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no and listening meditate, to your meditate, podcast meditate. and stuff like that yeah like listening to you it opened me up and you know like you sent me some links to listen to and i was like oh my god that's exactly how i feel like so th- yeah that's i'm not crazy yeah so thank you for that yeah. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah, our pleasure. So, um, <laughs> you have any other last things to say before we go? Nah, man. Just thank you. It was it was cool. Like, I mean, obviously, yeah. don't Thanks don't for know you me, guys. very well. Yeah, but it was cool to get to know. know you on a much deeper yeah. level. Yeah, it's like yeah. open up, real talk. Let's get to it. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Drop them bombs. Yeah, keep keep these guys. I mean, like, I I 
I look forward for the for the next. You know, I'm I'm listening to your podcast every now and then when I'm at work. Yeah. So this is definitely helping. So thank you. Yay! So, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, All right, for everybody watching, thanks again for watching Real Talk with Casey and Joshua. We'll see you next time. Peace. Yay! Peace.